Do I? <laughs> this is why I don't own paperbacks. Hey, hi, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mouse or Andy. If you are new here, I talk about books. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thanks for watching. Uh, today, I will be talking about the four books that I read during Scallywagathon. Um, Scallywagathon is a readathon that is pirate themed. Um, none of the books I really read were uh, boat themed or ocean themed. Um, there was a reference to water in one of the books, but the rest of it has was um, a lot of like ghosts. <laughs> a lot of ghosts in my books this for this readathon. I'm just not realizing or or dead people. Um, anyway, so for Scallywagathon, I had a thread on Twitter that kind of went through all of the books that I read and my progress on that. So I will link that down below as well as all of the information about Scallywagathon and the creators so that you guys can follow all of their information and like and subscribe and all of that to their stuff because they are very great creators and I've been enjoying watching their videos as well as um, following them on the social medias. So uh, I wanted to do a video where I kind of review the um, four books that I read. I generally don't review books in a sit-down format like this. I normally if I do, it's my wrap up and usually I have so many books to go over that I don't have enough time to talk about each individual book. So this will be interesting. <laughs> I hope that no one thinks that my um, reviews are just like, I thought it was good. So the first book that I read for Scallywagathon was Paolo Santiago and the River of Tears by uh, Taylor K. Mejia. Mejia? Um, sorry for the mispronunciation. If there was one. Um, this book is about Pola and her friend Dante and Emma and um, essentially it is about the story of La Llorona but it's kind of their own twist to this story. Um, Paola is... her mom is a single mom and she believes in a lot of the um, magic and myth and lore from their culture and Paola is very scientific of a 12 year old and she does not agree with any of those things. Um, she thinks it's silly and um, she's essentially had to parent herself as well as her mom at the age of 12 um, and that's been difficult as well as the fact that she's 12 and life is changing and her friends are going in different directions and it hurts her feelings a little bit and so she's just experiencing those super normal 12 year old things um, and then Emma goes missing. So the story is about how those tales from her childhood and from her mom and uh, Dante's grandmother, how they are actually true and she needed to believe in them and have faith in herself and do all of those things in order to save Emma. Um, throughout this book she is a really fun character because she's pretty stubborn and intellectual and um, she acts like most 12 year olds that I know which are not as silly they're they're pretty serious little girls and um, I think that Taylor did a really good job of writing that because I think that so often kids are written as very very like much more childish than they actually are and um, I think Taylor did a really good job of representing middle schoolers. Um, so this is a middle grade book and anything that I say about it is from that middle grade perspective. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I liked the character development as she dealt with her relationship with her mom and with her friends and how those things changed like I've mentioned. Um, I thought that all of that was really well done but I also think the more fantastical parts of it so the um, river and the puppy chupacabra and um, all of that I thought was really well done and really interesting and I can't wait to read more books from this series because just the way that this was written was a fun read and yeah it was really likable. I'm glad that I picked it for my first book. It put me on the right step, right spot for Scallywagathon. Um, the next book that I read was uh, Ghost Squad by Clarabel A. Ortega. Um, I follow her on Twitter and watch her Twitch streams. She's a really fun author. Um, she actually got to speak on Good Morning America for this book. Um, I don't know if that's out yet. I haven't 
I'm not sure. I need to check. In Ghost Squad, we follow Lucy Luna and her friend Sydney. Um, there is something going on with the spirits. So Lucy has been able to see spirits. I seemingly forever. There's something going on with them that's wrong and her dad runs a haunted um, tour and the uh, they're doing this haunted tour and loosely like experiences something really terrible and she sees her mom like being dealt with with malicious spirits and it freaks her out and um, so she and Sydney her best friend uh, are trying to figure out what's going on and they enlist the help of Babette uh, Sydney's witch Sid's witch uh, grandmother. So this was really interesting. Um, it is about, you know, the Dominican culture, which I actually don't know a whole lot about. And so it was really kind of cool to see it from this middle grade perspective. And um, there's witches and ghosts and magic and covens and <laughs> all of that, you know, the phrasing, it's on the back, but the phrasing in the book that I really liked was be prepared, respect the dead, always have a cat. Um, and I really, I thought this was a fun story. Um, it really was Coco meets the Ghostbusters. <laughs> um, and they did talk about calling themselves something similar to the Ghostbusters. And that's how they come up with the fact that they're the Ghost Squad. And like, that's their thing. Um, and just the way that the story came to a head was really, really fun. I found that the pacing was pretty smooth and um, consistent and the cats were really fun to read about. Uh, I loved Babette. Babette was my absolute favorite character in the book. Um, she is that like, don't mess with her kind of grandmother energy and I liked that. Yeah, this was a really fun middle grade book and I am thinking of uh, lending it to some of my younger cousins because I think that they'll like this a lot. Uh, I'm really glad that I read it. I'm sorry that I'm saying um so much. This is just not my normal <laughs> reviewing thing. Uh, yeah, but this was a really solid read. I knocked this out in the same day that I knocked this out um, because of the length and the length of the audiobook. So this audiobook is on Scribd, by the way, if anyone wants to listen to it and has a Scribd subscription. And then this audiobook I got with uh, Libro FM. And uh, this one has a Rick Riordan um, thing in the beginning of it, which was kind of cool. But this audiobook, the reader was really, really solid. Um, so yeah, I physically read these and also listened to them because of who I am as a person. But this audiobook I was able to knock out throughout the day, which was really nice. Just the way that she deals with her grief with her mom. I don't know why I'm reading all these books about girls with parental issues, I guess. Um, makes for a good story. But yeah, this was really good. Glad I read it. The next book that I read was a reread for me, and it was The Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews. This is a book, let me tell you. Um, first off, this book is classed as horror, and having reread it now as an adult, I would no longer class it as horror as I would have when I read it when I was like 12. Um, it's not scary, it is sad. It is just a very sad book. Um, I will be watching the movie later for another video and reading the rest of the books in this series for another video. But it was just sad. Like, everything about it was just sad. So in The Flowers in the Attic, if you don't know, if you haven't read it, there's a lot of incest. Uh, but essentially, the mom, the, the Dollinganger's dad passes away. And the mom doesn't know what to do because she's never had a job and she's always had people take care of her. And so she um, contacts the grandparents and begs them to take her back because they've disowned her basically. And they take her back, but under the condition, the grandmother takes her back, but under the condition that she hides away her four children because the grandfather assumes that she did not have any children with her husband who they did not approve of. I will not tell you why he did not approve of them because I would consider that a spoiler and I'm trying to give you a spoiler free review. <laughs> so these four kids are locked up in the attic for several years and there is a boy and a girl who are older. Um, they go in at 12 and 13, 14, and then they go, then they have two twin siblings who go in at five, aged five. Um, and they are locked in this attic and the grandmother is incredibly religious and abusive. Um, and she consistently abuses them in all manners of ways. So emotional, physical, food, like takes food away, that kind of thing. Um, very manipulative and very dark. As the series goes on, I know you find out about why she is the way that she is. Not acceptable just to be very clear. I don't find that acceptable at all. 
Um, but this is a classic book. It's one of those classic horrors that everyone says that you should read. But having reread it, this book is messed up mostly because it's just sad. So the, I didn't give my star rating for the other two. The other two I rated five out of five stars. This one I rated four out of four, four out of five stars. Um, because the pacing and stuff was good, but there was just some of it that when you're reading about it, it's just sad, and the likelihood of it happening feels unlikely. <laughs> so that's why I took a star away from what would have been my original review at, you know, 12. I would have been like, five out of five stars, it was so scary, I can't read, read the next one, ah! And now I'm just like, it wasn't scary, it was just sad. Do I recommend anyone read this book? The other two books, totally recommend. Do I recommend anyone read this book? If you're my age and you've gone this long without reading it, you're fine. Watch the movie. Watch the Lifetime movie. There's two of them. Just watch one and you'll be good to go, you know? Uh, the next one is, and I'm going to be very transparent here, there is two days left of Scallywagathon as of my recording this, and I am 75% into this. So I have not finished it and I cannot give you my complete review. But the reason I'm going ahead and including this is because I'm stupid. So I read Gideon the Ninth. She right there. I read Gideon the Ninth last month with um, Elle, who's at is Ink and Plasma, her queer book club that I'm in. And um, it was very good, but I did not know what was going on. And this is very good, but I even more do not know what is going on. And I need to reread both of these books when I have time to dedicate absolute 100% of my attention and actually annotate the book. Um, because this book is very much throws you in head first and doesn't explain what's going on. Like there's not a whole lot of explanation. It's just kind of like, here you go, figure it out as you go, which is not everyone's cup of tea. I like it for some books and not for others. This was, both of these books does it well. However, I'm stupid. Um, and sometimes it takes me reading something twice for me to understand what's going on. If I were to rate it now, I would probably rate it 3.5 out of 5 stars. But it's because I'm an idiot. I love Harrow, though. I love Harrow Hark so much. I love that character. I think she's oh, so sarcastic and rude and a smart ass and I love that for her. <laughs> um, I find her, I, I like reading things from her perspective. Um, things being told in a second person point of view, so you're hearing it like your hero or reading it like your hero is a little extra confusing for me. Um, so there's that. I'm struggling a little bit to understand the book and that is why I am including it in the um, in this kind of wrap up because I'm uh, struggling a little bit. <laughs> I'm struggling but I'm enjoying it. I'm just stupid is really what's going on and I don't want someone to be like how can she even review a book she hasn't finished or she's saying she doesn't understand because I like the characters so much and the world is so cool but when it comes to the plot of the book and what's happening I don't know. I don't know what's happening. But I genuinely think if I were to reread the books, I would still feel the same way that I do about the characters in the world, and I would understand the plot better. It's not that I don't understand the plot. Like, I know what's happening in the book, but I'm foggy on the details. Does that make sense? Probably not. It does to me. Yeah, all in all though, Scallywagathon has been pretty fun. I was falling into a little bit of a reading slump, and this sort of pushed me towards um, doing better and reading more and, and reading more throughout the day. I enjoyed the challenges that they put on Twitter, so each day they would tweet a couple of challenges. I didn't participate in a ton because the first day of Scallywagathon, when I feel like they did the most challenges, I had food poisoning. <laughs> so I missed the first like day and a half of Scallywagathon because I was sick, and then I started. So I think I really could have done eight stops instead of just four had I not been sick, but because I was sick that really um, put a damper on things but I really enjoyed it. I am glad that I got to participate in it and um, create these videos, this these two videos for you. I was gonna vlog it, but like I said, because I was sick and that just kind of made things weird. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it's not my normal format. With this, I, I wanted to sit down and actually talk to you guys about Scallywagathon and how it was fun and how I really, if it happens again next year, I really intend to participate because I had a really fun time. Um, maybe next year I'll read more pirate books. <laughs> Do you guys like this kind of video? Do you like where I do a readathon that is accessible to others and I tell you about the TBR and then I do this kind of video? Like what kind of 
content do you want is what I'm looking for. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It's been pretty fun to make. This is, like I said, not my normal kind of video, but I hope you guys are having a, well, how many times am I going to say you guys? <laughs> I hope that everyone is having a great week. Um, I will catch you guys on Tuesday. Once again, you guys, I'll catch all of you on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. I don't know what day this post is going to go up, so on that, but yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share if you want to. Don't forget to look, check out all of the other creators who did, who are part of Scallywagathon. Yeah, I also have included some new links down below, including a Libro FM e link because I am trying to convert all of Audible over there because I like their uh, mission better. And, um... What's the other link? Oh, if you want to help me and Sam close caption, my friend Sam helps me close caption my videos. Um, if you want to help us out though, there should be a link down below. I don't know when they're going to get rid of community caption or if they're still going to, but if they don't, great, you can click that link and help us out by ca closed captioning the video. If you don't want to do that, then I totally understand because I don't like to do it either. But I'm trying to make my videos more accessible to everyone. With all of that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm out.